All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you, brothers that are laboring and pushing this word in truth and sincerity and with charity. I'm the brother Abraham from the camp here in GMS Chicago. Come to do another quick lesson to the Holy Spirit. Lord willing to be edifying. And, um, in this lesson, um, it was pretty much inspired by uh, listening to Elder Gabar, Elder Apostle Gabar's video uh, that he did today, which was, he was uh, going into the four carpenters in Zechariah, the first chapter. Um, now, as I was listening to the video, which, um, you know, I was wooed that he did a video on it because that that four carpenter scripture uh came up as a question this week in class um so i thought oh snap that's the spirit right that he went into that because you know we were talking about that in class and a few of us brothers forgot the breakdown um so i was wooed that he went into it you know but it goes to show you that always happens, man. Um, whenever you are got a question on something or um, it's not fully revealed to you. And then, you know, it might not be that day. It might be a, the next day, a couple of days. Um, either the, um, it comes up with the brothers or... You know, you go on YouTube and you start watching the videos and then the feed comes and then next thing you know, a video going into uh, something you've been meditating on, uh, questioning on, uh, pops up. You know, that happens countless of times, numerous of times. It's going to continue to happen, um, but it just goes to show you that um, the spirit is one spirit. And we're all in unison. So it's a beautiful thing. It's, o it's always uh, boosts your faith. Um, and I get wooed every single time that happens, man. Um, but nevertheless, um, he was going into uh, the building of God's temple. Right? Uh, the building of God's temple, which... Uh, Starts with us preaching this word, because we all, each every um, able body, uh, represents one of those living stones that makes up this spiritual house. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and start off. Um, now I have Psalms fifty here on the screen. And really, the point is in 21, but I'm going to start at verse 16 to uh, give some background context and um, to show you who it's talking about. Right. So this is Psalms 50 and verse 16, starting at verse 16. It says, but unto the wicked God saith, what has thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Now, according to Malachi, the first chapter, um, the Most High tells you who the wicked is, and that is Esau Edom. Okay, uh, he describes him as the border of wickedness. Okay, the border of wickedness. So, this is speaking of Esau Edom. But unto Esau Edom, the wicked, God said, what has thou to to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Right? Because they swear on this Bible. Right? Every time a uh, president of the United States gets inaugurated into office. They swear on the Bible. Which is uh, contrary to the word of the Most High. Okay? Scriptures tell you not to swear on anything. All right? And they go ahead and do it on the word, right? 
So it says, See, seeing thou hatest instruction and catches my words behind thee, right? Because they do everything contrary to what is written and to the law, statutes, and commandments. I forgot what president uh, said this or declared it, but one of them uh, declared the law of the Bible, the law of the land, right? But they don't do um, or implement the law, statutes, and commandments in the world today, all right? Or at least in the United States. All right, but they claim that this is a God fearing country and in God we trust and blah blah blah. But their actions speak otherwise. It says, Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee, when thou sawest a thief, then thou content consentest with, the, with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit. Right, and this man is all about deceit, deception, lying wonders, right? Like it says in Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, with uh, lying wonders, right? Because this man, uh, again in the scriptures, is described as the serpent that was more subtle than anyone else. Than anything else. So this man is all about deception. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, who's the brother of Esau, Jacob. It says, Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Right? These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. So, as Esau Edom has done all this uh, violence, slandering us, all right, um, just as it also says in Revelations, I believe. 12 and 10 or 10 and 12 around there uh, where it speaks about the accuser of thy brethren right that's Esau Edom accusing us to the Heavenly Father that we're going off but he's the one um, that pretty much put everything in our face to go off <laughs> right and all the violence that he's done, all the evil that he's done to us, atrocities, okay, injuries, unrighteous dealings, everything he stole from us, and he hasn't been punished for it. He thinks the Most High don't care. He thinks the Most High is not looking at him. He, sees, he thinks the Most High does not see that. No, it says, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Now that's talking about um, the Most High setting up his elect men back in order before the eyes of our uh, enemies. Right? Let's go ahead and grab... Um, I believe that's Isaiah 13. Um, Isaiah 13 and verse 2 <laughs> Lift thee up a banner upon the high, uh, the high mountain Exalt the voice unto them Shake the hand that they may go Into the gates of the nobles And um, Us preaching this word Has gone up to the higher ups Of the rulers of this world and they are aware of the prophets of the Lord all right um, it may not seem like it but it's true they know they're aware they're watching they got tabs um, 
They know who we are, but we don't have anything to fear because the Lord is on our side. And when, if the Lord is on our side, nobody can beat you. Nobody can come up against you and win against you because if God be for us, who can be against us? As it says in the book of Romans, right? The Lord is with us, all right? And the scriptures talk about how he... Um, the Most High put a mark upon Cain, right? And he that slayeth him, shall, uh, vengeance shall take hold of him sevenfold, right? Because vengeance is of the Lord, and he's the one that's going to take this devil down. So the Lord has a covering over Esau until the Lord comes back. You know, how much more his elect, his, uh, elect men, how much more his prophets, right? The scriptures talk about... In the book of Psalms, uh, I believe as well, uh, it says, "Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm." All right? Um, they might be able to persecute us, uh, beat us up, just as they did the prophets of old. All right, but you know, in the end, we're in the Lord's hands, man. Right? We're in the Lord's hands. And this time around, in this present time, right, uh, there will be a persecution about the prophets, as the scriptures do say, right? But no matter how it plays out, we'll, if we do die on this side, we'll be the first risen with the Lord. So we wake to everlasting life, or we... Um, as the scriptures say, there be some that taste not a death. So there's no losing situation. We can't lose. The Lord is with us and we cannot lose. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and grab Ezekiel 37. When it goes into the prophecy of us. Um... Goes into us waking up as a people, right? Ezekiel 37 and 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Okay, so this is the prophecy of the dry bones, the vision in the valley of the dry bones. Which the bones represented us as a people in a dead state, right? But this word, um, which represents that breath, wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, okay, gave us that life, right? Uh, the scriptures talk about in John 6 and 63, um, Uh, the word quickeneth. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Right? And these are the words that they are spirit and they are life. Okay? So they made us alive again. And now um, Esau sees us coming back to our power, which is what he fears the most. Right, according to uh, Judith, the fifth chapter, um, when Achior, who I believe was an Ammonite, um, gave the breakdown to, um, what's his name? I forgot his name. Uh, the captain of the army at that time that was coming up against to take over Israel, right? Um, Gave him the history of who we are as a people, how we fell, and when we were in, one, in unison with our power, you know, following him, following his statutes, laws, and commandments in the, in the way that he set us to be in, you know, we prospered, all, the, all our enemies were under our feet, nobody came up against us, but... When we departed from the Lord, 
right? We were destroyed, you know, and that's what Esau tries to um, tries to keep us in that state, away from our God, away from our power. Um, because if He keeps us in that way, then we will continue to be in the bottom. All right, he will continue to be in rulership. All right, but prophecy is inevitable. You can't stop this. Okay, the elect are waking up. The elect um, are already sealed, man, pretty much. All right. Um, let me see if I can find this preset. Yeah, this is uh, Revelations 11 and 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered unto them. And they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. Which again is going into uh, after uh, such a long time of us being without the truth. Now, coming back to the truth, now there's wisdom and understanding of who we are as a people, or the Israelites, all right, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, um, and seeing us on the streets condemning this place, all right, they're in fear, they're in fear, they, they know that he has but a short time, as it says, uh, let's go ahead and grab it. Right, uh, Revelations. Uh, I don't know if it's 10 or 12. Let me see. Yeah, this is Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So he knows that his time is running out. So E is getting sloppy. E is getting desperate. Okay. And it's all thanks to his prophets. Through the Lord who put his spirit in the prophets. To preach this word. Right. Because it was necessary. So that they would be without excuse. Okay. To our people. And to the other nations, starting with Esau, Edom. All right. Now let's go ahead and grab what's in the Solomon, chapter five and verse one. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, so far beyond all that they looked for. Right, so that righteous man represents us, the prophets, who are standing before the face of our enemies that afflicted us more times over for the longest time, for hundreds of years. Right, they thought we were nothing, and now they're in fear. Now they're troubled, and they're going to be amazed when the Lord comes back and saves who he considers, who the world considers the scum, the dirtbags of the earth. That's going to show the might and power of the Heavenly Father, just as he showed his might and power uh, with the place of Egypt, which he will send again. Okay, it, it says, uh, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say, Within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools are counting his life madness, 
and it's end to be without honor. Yeah, that's what they all thought about us, right? They thought we were just niggas and spicks, all right? Good for nothing. It says, how was he numbered among the children of God and his lot among the saints, all right? And that is our lot among the saints. We're numbered among the children of God, man. We can't lose. We're destined for to win. We're destined for greatness. Thanks to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. There's nothing this devil could do to us. And if he does, you know, like I said, we wake to everlasting life. The first risen with the Lord. There's no losing situation. <laughs> All right. Um, now, let me grab this here because uh, this is what's happening. Right? This is Amos 9 and 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close the, up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up. His ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. And that is what's being constructed. Is, uh, the spiritual house. Us being those lively stones, as the scriptures say. Uh, Yahweh Shai being that cornerstone, that foundation. He did the hard part. And we pretty much have the easy part, man. Right, he, he paved the way for us so that we could do this. And we can do all things through him, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, who strengthens us, man. So this is a mighty, honorable work. Okay. Um, but anyway, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Lord willing, this video was edifying. As always, all honor, glory, and praises goes to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kakodash, double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Mill. So until next time, Shalom.